Hey, it's Coach Indoor with Tactical Hive. Today we've got breaching tools. This is a sampling of breaching tools that pretty much came with us on every op. There's other ones uh, that you can get into, but they are heavy and they're focused on, you know, a specific item that you might find on target. But this came with us pretty much every time. Yeah, guys, we're just gonna get a little bit of how we set them up, how they were employed, a little bit of the tricks of the trade. So up next. So today's video is brought to you by Sonoran Desert Institute, SDI. If you're into guns, you like messing with them, repairing them, modifying them, then SDI will give you a vehicle to turn your passion into a career. Yeah, Coach actually graduated from that program and his game has definitely stepped up. I'm over in his garage watching him do his thing even more than before. So for what that's worth, you know, go ahead and check him out in the description below. Okay, so breaching tools. So the, the, the big three that we pretty much always took with us, all right, is gonna be, you got your Hooli, this manual tool. You know, it's, it's technically you firemen out there, it's a Halligan tool, we know that, but we do hooligan stuff with it. So yeah. It, for us, it was a Hooli. Right? It's a, like a literally on like a gear list, it will say Hooli or hooligan tool. And then, yeah, but any fireman, you know, was like, no, man, that's a Halligan. That's a Halligan. The guy that created this thing, his name's Halligan, so we call it a Halligan. So, good on you if you're, uh, you're, and uh, yeah, you are 100% right. We are wrong, but we're going to stay we're wrong. Stick with, we're sticking with it. Yeah, we're staying wrong. <laughs> okay, so with this thing, um, if you've got an, uh, an outward opening door, you can beat on it all day long with a sledgehammer and you're not going to get very far. But what this was for is you could hook in and pry and you get a good angle. Now this is extendable, so comes out, hook out and get some, some link to it. The idea was that you're gonna get this in the, uh, you can use it you know, in tight spaces, but that one opens doors. You can get it in the, in the jam and it's for prying, pry it open. Okay, now how I would carry this, um, normally this was all bound up here and then you'd have like something like this on your belt, and you drop that in there, and that just would ride around on your belt, right about here. Now, this, you know, on the back, you got these horns sticking out, so you always wanted to have your uh, your homemade pool noodle for her set up. <laughs> and we understand how janky and ridiculous this looks, but for our both of our careers, our time, 80s to 20s, this is how we secured these things. I mean, because these horns, this, you know, not only could it be on the back, but a lot of guys are on the on the belt. A lot of these guys wore these on the back of the plate carrier, right at head, face, neck level for the rest of the guys. And so we always would just take demo foam, riggers tape, duct tape, whatever we could find and create some kind of a last chance pad system. And um, I don't think I've ever seen like a professional purposely built one. Why? You're just going to tear it up anyway. If it's, yeah. You know, so these would just get made. They wear out that, you know, obviously they're, just duct tape and foam. And so we just keep making new ones. I just made these uh, earlier today because we couldn't find the old ones. <laughs> and you always want to have some sort of strap on there because if you pull it out and use it, well, you may not be the guy leaving with this thing. So you want to have some, you know, anybody could just throw this over their head, over their shoulder, and they can still use their hands while they, uh, while you, you know, get, get off target. Yeah, because generally speaking, um, with this equipment, as soon as you were done gaining entry, you basically just drop these on the ground. You'd leave them in the hallway. Sometimes we would uh, tape chem lights to them. So for low light conditions, you'd see the chem lights laying on the ground. Someone would swing by, grab this thing. And if you didn't have time to stow it away properly, just like Coach said, you had some kind of secondary sling method. Sometimes it was just bungee cord. You obviously have, you know, weapon slings. That's pretty cool. But um, you didn't want to leave these behind, yeah, especially specialty stuff like this because they're, they're harder to replace. Yeah, and you've got other targets. I mean, you know, the, if when you're working, you know, you're using this today, tomorrow you got to hit another place or mm -hmm. hell, maybe in the same day. So you want to make sure your, your gear stays with you. Uh, now, the, the sledge, that's a lot easier. There's, there's no, nothing really to, uh, 
to need to pad on this one you know it's what i think this is an eight pounder um you know just a good good thing to have if you've got an inward opening door lay into it with this bad boy and you're good to go or you can use it to set your holy uh, now both of these can be set up like on your uh, your plate carrier so on the back of your plate carrier well a common way to carry this as well you just we roll it through here like this and then you got a loop of uh you know just whatever you know usually a uh, so zip tie zip tie and then that'll hang there and that'll get you there for you know most occasions uh you don't want to be you know that's a that's a, a quick way to stow it yeah but you're not faster open with that because the right. sucker will beat you to the ground yeah any type of pair operations roping repelling anything to do with gravity defiance or you know you want it tight yeah you definitely want to use something more purpose-built you know this thing has a fast tech and it will keep it you know much much more secure it's not going to pop out hit anybody because you know once you start doing the batman stuff you know something like that could, could kill somebody you know mm -hmm. um so you definitely would have to have a higher level of retention yeah but if you were just doing you know more standard stuff yeah you could get away with a lot and normally i'd have a weapon sling on there as well uh -huh. that one went someplace i don't know i don't breach anymore but yeah it's okay you know but yeah the same idea is uh yeah you, you use the breach and it may just get dropped right there uh now so these these were like the, the your go-to's uh the nice to have if you want to do something quiet you're going to open a door quietly mm -hmm. and you can use this to to cut locks and and things like that and again just you know a little piece of bungee to keep it you know strapped together again throw a strap on there and then most of the time i had this in a uh in a backpack in that mm -hmm. camelback spot and just shove it right in there and just you know just rides here on your back when you need it you can pull it out of course i'm not sticking it back after i use it it's either hitting the floor or i'm pulling out the uh the strap and throwing it over my shoulder well, you could ask your buddy true for yeah. a little help if you got uh if you're in that kind of thing. it's like it's like asking for directions you know <laughs> like, yeah i mean you could you could I'm saying but, it's, i'm saying you're wrong i just you know yeah if you're into that kind of thing hey he's got other shit to do too right yeah. you know so now little pry bars like this are real handy anybody can carry them not just breachers and they're they work for a surprising amount of stuff you can mm -hmm. you can open which is a simple uh pry bear yeah you can rip bar. off the padlocks you can get it does they do work pretty well for the smaller stuff it's also a good conductor like stick when you're telling other people what to do as far as heavy breaching you don't want to get your hands in there you know there's torching Spars, quickie saws so, chainsaws yeah. that kind of stuff so i would i would use it you know to keep myself a little bit more safe but yeah this would generally run directly down the back of the plate carrier just like before through the molly and you just reach back uh with whatever hand but not only i would use it but other people would just kind of come up you know if i was holding on a door or doing whatever just come up rip it off my back go and use it and then uh, just like the other tools it would end, always end up on the ground i generally never put a chem light on it never worried about it that much so it was constantly getting left behind um i had one particular guy that i worked with who for whatever reason he just kept he was always the guy to grab this thing use it and, and he would just drop it on the ground make entry whatever and eventually somebody wrote his name on it <laughs> because it basically became his i carried it for him and then he would use it so it's still on there to this day nordy good to yeah. go all okay. right all the things that cut things these are good little wire snippers and they're linemen so uh you could cut a live wire with that if you had to and not worry about getting shocked but again this is for you know, a little more surreptitious smaller things uh cutting chain link fences this mainly what uh what we had these for but you took takes a little time mm -hmm. okay if you're gonna go quiet you gotta go slow if you want to go noisy hell bring that quickie saw you can zip through a chain link fence like that okay but the thing's huge and noisy okay mm -hmm. plus it throws sparks all of in place so. yeah and, and little stuff like this you know you just make it part of your standard loadout you have it just in case even when you weren't expecting to do any breaching you know it wasn't like maybe a full regalia direct action mission you know just having little things like this in your element your squad your whatever um it definitely came in handy so something to think about so all these things make a fair amount of noise but it's still you know uh, manual noise it's, it's knocks and dings and i mean you're quiet with this cutting you know wire but you're not going to make it through a door right now if you really got to make it through the door now 
and you're not afraid to make a little bit of noise, and you bring out your breaching shotgun. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, this one's set up. You know, you, you, you want to be able to address human threats after you deal with the door, but you know, it, it's always a secondary thing. You want to be on your, your main gun. This was always a secondary. Um, you know, once, once we learned what the hell we were doing over there, uh, yeah, nobody ran around with a primary. In fact, this one has a full stock on it, but a lot of them were just cut off um, here. So you, you make it nice and short. Um, but yeah, this works. And, you know, to use this thing, you're getting in here and the, uh, the idea, I never shouldered it. You didn't have to. If you're coming in to, to, to work a lock, you want to be out of, out of the door jam anyway. Mm -hmm. So you'd come in here and, you know, 40, 45 and 45 was the rule. Um, you can take out locks, hinges, um, you know, it, yeah, it's a really effective jam. tool. But it is noisy. It's noisy. Mm -hmm. It makes, makes a, a fair amount of racket. Um, and as we go up the... Uh, <laughs> What's this? What's this little guy? Well, the little lipstick? Guy. The lipstick? Yeah. What is that? Now, so if uh, whenever possible, you're going to want to use purpose-built breaching rounds. Mm -hmm. These are basically ceramic slugs that uh, come apart on impact, but they'll take yeah. out a door jam, they'll defeat locks. Uh, but as they hit the floor, because you are aiming down at a 45, they're supposed to completely come apart, keep people safe inside the room. Yeah. Less uh, lethal effect. Uh, less lethal on, effect. On the other now, it might get real dangerous for some of the people in that room very quickly after this. Yeah. But initially, you know, you don't want to be shooting at things you can't see. Yeah, early on, as Coach said, during the war, guys were running primary weapon system shotguns. I know a few guys that did, like 2003, four in the Baghdad area. Yeah. But you're also bringing along all your buddies well, with yeah, guns, yeah. too. So yeah, you 50 cals on your trucks, nice. helicopters with guns. Um, but I don't think that lasted very long. You know, this one is set up as a primary weapon system. We never would have run buttstocks on breaching shotguns mm -hmm. um, for just that purpose. You know, this one's got a red dot, great buttstock, and then it does have the uh, the breaching um, muzzle, which I could take it or leave it. You know, this one's okay because you have the longer tube for magazine capacity, but if you did not have this longer tube, if you had like a standard three-banger, four-banger tube, mm -hmm. I would not bother with these you just have you know you just keep that muzzle an inch off of the actual whatever it is you're trying to defeat the door jam the locking mechanism and i've never seen anyone have any problems you know especially when you when you run like if you got a just a standard extended tube mm -hmm. i think this one's a van comp or uh gg and g yeah but it's 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 heavy it's milled this thing is 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 beefy because when the 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 round hits, it splatters down. And if this is just a, a sheet metal tube, uh, they tend to kink and then you're done. Yeah. So, you know, you want to have something that's robust when uh, when you're coming to breach in. Anytime you're, you're putting that muzzle up against something to uh, to execute. But, yeah. Yep. But having that, you know, this standoff, having the grip, not that you can use it with this extended tube, but in the dark, you're in a hurry. Maybe you haven't done this that much. Just having that touch point. I'm um, in the heat of the moment. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I just started breaching before they came out with cool stuff like this. So once they did, I'm like, whatever. But that's just me, you know? Yeah. All right. Now, the, 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 the shotgun will get you in quick, now you, and you're thinking doors, okay? Mm -hmm. You you knock locks and hinges. Uh, if you got a heavier door, then it's going to take a little more oomph than, than what you got here. Mm -hmm. So that's when we get into explosive mm -hmm. breaching. All, All right. right. Now... Uh, this is, you know, this is a mock-up here for training. Um, this what we call 15 incher, um, and it was designed. You'd have uh, explosive data sheet on one side, or you know, packed in between two pieces of rubber, basically like conveyor belt rubber. Um, then you'd have some sort of sticky substance on here. Okay, now hydrogel, which is the stuff that they use uh, to attach electro electrodes to human flesh. You know, when you do uh, EKGs and stuff, that's mm -hmm. what this stuff is here. And this is older. It's lost a, a bunch of its, uh, uh, you know, stickiness. It's but, basically like an epoxy sheet. Yep. So you would put this, it's double double sticky, right? So you, this blue, you would leave on here. So when you got up there, you pull this out, pull that blue off of there, stick this on the door. And most doors, you got uh, a doorknob and your bolt or within this distance. So you stuff that in there, hook up your uh, your your firing reel, 
and there was a couple different ways to do that. We won't go to get into that now. Uh, and then you'd fall back to your minimum safe distance, clack that sucker off, and then it just takes out all the locking mechanisms, and then you know you make entry. Um, now, to attach that, um, if it's a metal door, I mean, you probably need something a little bit more beefy than that. But uh, if it is metal, you, we have these magnets, which are uh, yeah, these, these reach magnets. magnets. They're they're no joke. You don't want to get your your hand stuck between them because uh, they're uh, they got some strength to them. So I mean, they'll you know they they cling on right be through your flesh, um, and they'll pinch you. Um, so a lot of times, what we do is you you put some uh, some tape on the outside to give you something to grab onto, so you can peel it off. But yeah, they. Uh, if you're working in a metal environment, like a lot of times we were with ships, that's going to stick to almost anything. And then just the the type of construction in certain parts of the world, you know, there's just not a lot of wood, yeah. a lot of yeah. forest. Flimsy sheet metal works awesome yeah. for those. You just put it on, crank, gone. And even in a dry environment in the early morning, you could get that dew, you know, um, mm -hmm. on the metal door. And the hydrogel, the adhesive does not like that. So you always got to have a secondary attachment method for your environment. Yeah. Got to get creative. We've done everything from like prop sticks to, you know, on a mud wall. There's not, nothing sticking to a mud wall. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd run up, throw that thing up there, throw a prop stick on, and it would hold your, your charge. And we're talking about wall breaching charges now that they were, were bigger. This is just what you would have every time you, you guys are running around with these. And then um, for... Uh, and and you can use this because it's a small amount of explosive. You can use it indoors without blasting everybody's ears out. Okay. Uh, now from going outside to inside, we use seven foot charges, and there's a bunch of other stuff that you can use that makes a lot more noise, has more of a standoff. But that's mm -hmm. making that initial breach into the building. After that, once you're inside, um, the the 15 inches. Yeah. Real well. So depending on what type of target it is, you know, obviously. You know, Intel is huge and you're going to have um, as much information as possible. You're going to pick that primary charge. It'll be a push charge or a cutting charge, ECT. You're going to have to take a look at, you know, the door, how to get it attached on there. Yeah. We, we could do a whole stuff. thing yeah. in explosive breaching. It's a lot, but this is just the it, generic lot stuff. Know. And these, uh, these slaps, these 15 inches, they're pretty much generic and go on target every single time. Yeah. And um, this, uh, we had this, uh, this setup made. I mean, it's Velcro, so you can Velcro it on pretty much your gear strap it on uh i've had this riding on a, a backpack or it's, it was meant to be a leg pouch so you could just put on your leg reach down it carries two charges and two reels so you're all set up right there for uh for your your um reaching yeah and then initiators you had um generally speaking you ran with two different kinds you had the dual and this had, would run two separate uh lines to two separate caps so it was like a 200 percent chance hopefully that it went off effectively you'd use this for your primary shot that was yeah the yeah. outside breach that yeah, outside. you want to make sure that sucker goes 100 percent you're at your most vulnerable right before you get in get internal so you definitely want to make sure that goes and then, like that two is one one is none yeah right demo yeah. baby it works and then the little guy this is the 55 you, you generally have at least one of these somewhere on your kit as a backup and then Guys that were running slaps would generally have one of these ready to go. Yep, all set up. And basically all this is is uh, a pencil flare. That's your Mark mm -hmm. 1 model plant pencil flare that the guys at Crane would like drill a little hole, put your little pin in there so that you're you're now safe, right? So I can have this actually hooked up to the, uh, to not to the charge, but mm -hmm. to the cap. To the cap. <laughs> Pull it out, attach the cap, fall back. The, we, you know, the known L would be pretty much at your minimum safe distance with your hand out here like this, and then you let it go. Really effective. I don't think I've ever had one of these misfire on me. They're, yeah. they're badass. Yeah, they work. Definitely yeah. work. All right. Uh, another, another trick of the trade we have here, the man's hair clip. Yeah, the hair clip for men. The hair clip for men. And uh, basically you could use this to attach different types of charges and initiators together. Um, you know, if this is just bungee, but if it was, uh, you know, some kind of explosive cord, detonation cord, you could clip this in. And it just holds the cap right in there next yeah. to it. So when you hit your initiator, so it's, it was pretty quick to, you know, once you get everything set up, get your bomb set up on the door or wherever your, your breach site is, 
uh, you just hook that to it, fall back, and you could attach this to your, you know, longer pieces, shorter pieces, whatever. Another important thing to have if you're, you know, dealing with breaching equipment, especially on the explosive side, is tape is very important. Yeah. Um, you're running a breacher Where? bag, you probably throw a roll of this in the bag just to have, but you need to have fast access tape. Yeah. So this one here is set up, just a little bit of electrical tape yep. shoved in here, and this is easy to get to. That's for this hand. Well, you might not be in a position, depending on where you are, you know, disadvantaged positions or whatever, um, you may not be able to get it. So I always had tape at least two places, you know, electrical tape, just to make sure everything was good to go. Uh, the hair clip is awesome, but if you got time, you'd throw an extra wrap of uh, electrical tape on there just to make sure. Uh, yeah, it's a very important that your explosive train, as it's known, has intimate contact. You don't want any chance of it of the explosive being deflected and not transferring from one component to the next. I know that's kind of vague, but it's you know your initiator is where it starts, and it need that explosive power needs to find its way all the way to the main charge. The cap so, needs to be yeah. attached to the charge, and if it comes undone, then you'll get the cap will go, yeah. and uh, the main charge won't. Now you just made noise, and uh, taping them together. Very important. It's worth it. Tape doesn't weigh very much. Yeah. So, you know, that, that ounces equals pounds and pounds equal pain. Yeah, that, that that is a saying, but man, I'll throw a little extra tape on there because you never knew. Now, um, also with uh, with tape like this, what we what you can do is, uh, you know, carrying a big roll of this around, kind of a pain in the ass. But if you pull out a little about yay much and just stick it on your leg, you know, I get down there and go, oh, I need something, you know, so this is tape would just be on all kinds of crap. Yeah. You just pull it off, and then if something ain't quite sticking, this, you know, it's pretty good uh, rigorous tape, uh, it'd give you a chance to, to to make things stick that didn't want to stick. Mm -hmm. So that was just, you know, I had this stuff just, you know, lines of it on my legs or down my arm, whatever, just wherever you needed you can tell breachers because we had tape up. yeah another telltale sign would be uh thumbtacks guys would have thumbtacks stick, stuck into their helmets like on their shoulder pads things like that if you're in a more western i guess construction type you know there's wood drywall things like yeah. that, that you can shove a a, a thumbtack into you'd start to see that very popular in training because yeah. obviously we're sourcing our training materials locally but um if you're in that steel aluminum environment maybe thumbtacks aren't going to work for you but again you just got to know where you're going what you're doing and, and the idea was to have a variety of options yeah you know options make the difference if you got to make that you got to make the hole right mm -hmm. if you can't get into the building you can't do all the other sexy stuff that we do right so the idea was yep yeah, you know back when i first started this it was uh called uh, moe method of entry so mm -hmm. just say mo you bring your guy up low no guy no. Blast a get big hole in there, get in there, right? Uh, and then everything else falls into place. But uh, that, that, that's key is uh, is breaching, getting in the damn door or making a door, whatever you got to do. Yeah, breach her up, baby. Breach her up. That's the hand signal. All right, guys. Hey, if you like this content, like, subscribe, and leave us some comments. This is Coach and Door out.